Hello everyone, welcome back to the HashiCorp Certified Terraform Associate Cloud Certification Catalyst Program. We are back with question number seven. So going straight to the question, your developers are facing a lot of problems while writing complex expressions involving difficult interpolations. They have to run the Terraform plan every time and check whether there are errors and also check Terraform apply to print the values as a temporary output for debugging purposes, what should be done to avoid this? So basically what is happening is that your developers who are using Terraform, they're writing a lot of complex expressions. Okay, for example, using a lot of Terraform functions, maybe zip map, uh, flatten, okay, using a lot of splat expressions, maybe complex structural types like maps, objects, and stuff like that, okay. And when they're writing it, they don't have any way currently to check what is happening. And when they're, for example, running the Terraform plan, they're getting errors, or when they're running Terraform apply, they're debugging using the output section of the root module, okay. So for every child module, they're having to push that output to the root module. And then in the root module, again, publish that output to the actual console and stuff like that. So they have to do a lot of, basically they are getting into a lot of problems while writing difficult statements in Terraform. It's a very important part of how you want to use Terraform. For complex infrastructures, you will have to use a lot of Terraform inbuilt functions, complex structure types and so on. Okay, so what can be done to avoid is, what is the solution that you can suggest? So option one, use Terraform zip map function zip map function it will be able to easily do the interpolations without any complex code so this is incorrect so this one basically this question is testing your knowledge of terraform functions okay how you can use some feature of terraform to basically solve this problem now terraform zip map is actually a function but what it does it takes two lists of same length and basically creates a map out of them so this has nothing to do with this at all it just to confuse Secondly, add a breakpoint in your code using the watch keyword and then output the value to the console for temporary debugging. Again, there's nothing called watch keyword in Terraform, which for example, you can just write this and it will basically output it and you can run the code in a debug mode. No, nothing like that right now. So you cannot, for example, write, give a breakpoint in your code like you can do for a C Sharp or a Java program okay and investigate the values there no so this point option a and b both are not possible actually option c is use terraform console command to have an interactive ui with full access to the underlying terraform state to run your interpolations and debug at real time and option d is similarly use terraform console command to have an interactive ui but you can only use it with local state as it does not work with remote state. So Terraform console is actually the correct answer. What it does, it basically gives you an interactive console where you can write, for example, one plus one, it will give you two. You can test your complex interpolations in that um, console itself. So you can write a complex interpolation using inputs and variables and the Terraform console can actually get the values of those variables as if it was running the actual code because it can fetch all of those from the state file. So as you know, the state file will contain all of this information, your variables, your actual resource IDs, their attributes and all of this. So you can basically use Terraform console to refer to the state file for all those data. And then you can actually at real time, basically write code and check the output. So you can write a complex expression type enter and see the value. Maybe it is giving an error, then you again change it. Maybe the value is not matching. Then you check all the variables directly from the console because it has access to the state file which contains all of this data. Now the difference between C and D is seeing C is saying just use the Terraform console to access the underlying Terraform state. And D is saying use the same command but this will only work with local state but not with remote state. So this is incorrect. This works both with local and with remote state. And see, 
if it did not work with remote state then this command is completely useless actually for any such use cases where remote state will be used and this is the most possibility possibility is for enterprises and big projects to use remote state because local state is actually fine as long as you are just one developer as soon as you are doing bigger projects involving teams and stuff you need for example remote state so the correct answer is c obviously you need to use the terraform console command but also there is no such limitation that this command can only work with remote state or local state okay so the answer is c use the terraform console command to have an interactive ui with full access to the underlying terraform state to run your interpolations and debug at real time okay now let's go to basically the actual documentation so you can see the terraform console command will provide an interactive console for evaluating the expressions okay this is very important okay it is useful for testing interpolations before you use them in configuration and for interacting with any value which is currently saved in state so if the value is saved in state then terraform basically console can access that value because it has access to the state if the current state is empty or it has not yet been created the console can be used to experiment only with the expression syntax and the built-in function you still use the terraform console but obviously it will not be as full-fledged because you don't have access to the outputs of an uh, resource attribute and stuff like that okay now you what you have to understand is basically the part where this is happening as you can say if remote state is used by the current backend terraform will read the state for the current workspace from the backend before evaluating any expressions so this is also very important okay so you can actually use your remote backend also okay to basically fix this uh, get the values from your remote state and then use it for your day-to-day -day operations basically you can use either local state or you can use remote state there is no issues you can use both states and what you have to do is that you only have to remember that you are, if you want to use it in a full-fledged option then you need to basically enable your state file so that your state contains the references of those resource and all its attributes otherwise it will not work okay because if your state does not contain the value then you will not be able to reference it so you need to keep your environment as close to the actual environment and then this and this will and this will work for you now you must know that why i have kept this question as part of this series because i personally got a question on terraform console and i'm quite sure that in this exam you are going to be tested on all those terraform functions like terraform console terraform refresh terraform init apply so please familiarize yourself with the different terraform commands right like all of this and also terraform functions like zip map substring and all of those things so keep me posted and uh, please uh, share your feedbacks in the comment section and i will uh, catch up with you guys again later